bring in Nakima Levy Pounds, a lawyer and an activist. She's led Black Lives Matter protests and demonstrations, and she joins us now from Minnesota. Nakima, we really appreciate you being with us. I want to first tackle the legal aspect of this. We have seen time and time again that even though we have that hard evidence, which is the video that we've seen, the burden of proof is on prosecutors to show that the officers willfully violated Floyd's constitutional rights. How big of a challenge do you think that that will be in bringing justice to George Floyd? In all honesty, Ray Charles could see that George Floyd's constitutional rights were violated by the conduct of those officers. The reality is that we have a Hennepin County attorney who has steadfastly refused to hold killer cops accountable. And in this case, we see him once again making an excuse as to why he cannot prosecute white cops who have killed an unarmed black man. There's absolutely no way that it is acceptable that a man going into a store and attempting to use $20, uh, whether it was real or counterfeit, no one knows, that should not have been a death sentence in the state of Minnesota. We do not have the death penalty here. So how is it that law enforcement officers are able to judge, jury, and executioners and to be able to kill people with impunity? So what you see how people doing here in Minnesota is rising up and refusing to accept the status quo and refusing to continue to allow the injustices to be perpetuated here. When we look at and we're seeing pictures of the protests right here, we just had some we're seeing them actually all across the United States. These are out of Denver, Colorado, but we've been keeping an eye on them, not just in Minneapolis, but in New York, in Los Angeles. There are just thousands of people out protesting against the death of George Floyd. Do you think this is a turning point? How do you make sure as the as the leader of a movement that this is a turning point when we have seen this so many times before well the best thing that i can do is to continue to urge people to persevere in the past as you said we have seen uh, video evidence of police officers killing uh, unarmed african-american people our hopes are high and then they go through a judicial process that is inherently racist, that is inherently broken, and that um, violates people's um, civil rights and human rights. And it's just completely unacceptable. So all I can do is remind people that history continues to repeat itself, but that doesn't mean that we have to fight this battle lying down. In the spirit of our ancestors, we have to rise up knowing that we're going up against a, a wicked and corrupt system that is hell-bent on oppressing us and denying us the full rights of our humanity, even though we know that we, we deserve to live free in the land that our ancestors helped to build. Nakima, we're looking at live pictures out of Minneapolis right now where we can see that a protester has been injured. We know that in New York there were uh, more than a dozen people that were arrested. We know people have been hurt in these clashes between police and protesters. Is there a right way to protest without the message getting lost in all of this? Well, I don't think it's about the message getting lost. I think it's about people recognizing that when we protest, we are going up against police forces that are heavily militarized. They have purchased equipment in, in many instances from the military, which means high power to stop rifles, which means tanks, which means other equipment that is detrimental to the average person. It's unconscionable that officers would put on riot gear, that they would bring large rubber bullets, that they would bring chemical weapons such as tear gas and mace, and that they would attack American citizens as if they are in a foreign country fighting a foreign enemy. How is it that we've come to the, the, the place in this country where we find police officer conduct acceptable when people are simply 
advocating for justice and demanding that the government be accountable and transparent for how it allows its police forces to operate. Nakima, we're looking at pictures right now of a protester that had just been tear gassed. Uh, some other protesters and demonstrators were trying to pour water on him. We saw another gentleman with a gallon of milk there. Uh, that's something that's frequently being used to sort of soften the uh, impact of the tear gas. Where is the National Guard right now? I, I don't know where the National Guard is, but I wish they would go back to where they came from. I was one of the people who was tear gassed last night at the third precinct. And I don't know if you've ever been tear gassed before, but it is extremely painful. You cannot breathe. You have fluid falling down your face. It is hard to catch your breath. My voice hasn't been the same since I have been tear gassed. And there was no reason for officers to tear gas the crowd at that moment. They're indiscriminately shooting rubber bullets indiscriminately shooting tear gas canisters and projectiles at people without issuing any warning. It's extremely dangerous. If I had asthma, I could have died. How is that acceptable for the government to place people in dangerous situations? Because we have to stand up and fight and protest when they abuse black bodies, when they kill black bodies, when they criminalize black bodies. And yet, as we protest their conduct with this business as usual, we're then subjected to further abuse when they're able to pull out these weapons, rubber bullets, and tear gas. Again, it's unacceptable. We have to change the narrative and stop blaming protesters for standing up for their freedom. Nakima, the president has urged the FBI and the DOJ to accelerate their investigations. Uh, into what is happening there in Minneapolis. Certainly, they'll be looking at whether this is a pattern in the Minnesota Police Department. What do you think those investigations will do? Well, if past history is any indication, absolutely nothing. Beyond that, we have a president that has given speeches urging police departments to use excessive force against suspects. So how would anyone in their right mind assume that the president has any interest in pursuing justice for those who have experienced police violence, police brutality, and death at the hands of the police? We do not trust in these systems. They can bring in the FBI, the DOJ, the county attorney, the attorney general. At the end of the day, so many of these systems are corrupt. They rubber stamp the status quo and they don't deliver justice for black victims. That is why you see the uprisings in the city of Minneapolis and across the nation, because people understand that we cannot get justice going through these systems. So they're finding alternative ways to make their voices heard and to get their messages across. It shouldn't come to this. We should have systems that are effective for holding people accountable, especially law enforcement, given the immense amount of power that they have, including the power to take a person's life with a very low threshold for using excessive force. Okay. And Nikima, I just want to ask you one more question before we have to turn to some other news. Why do you think that these four officers have been fired but not charged? Well, there are uh, different... Um, systems that make these decisions. So the police chief has the authority to uh, fire those officers, and he was well within his authority in doing so. But there is a different actor within the system, the Hennepin County attorney, who gets to make the charging decision on whether those officers should face criminal penalties. And again, as I said at the top of the uh, segment, our county attorney has a history of failing to hold police officers accountable. So that's why they haven't been charged. Not that they didn't violate the law, not that they didn't illegally take a man's life, but because we have a lazy, racist county attorney who refuses to uphold the law in the position that he has. And we all recognize that. 
Nakiva Levy Pounds, we really appreciate you coming on. We hope you will come on again as we continue to follow these developments closely. Thank you so much for being with us.